Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to make it crystal clear what exactly we mean by the second moment of area. We're going to compare it to the moment of inertia, and you can, you'll be able to see the similarities between the two and finally understand, okay, now I know what it is. There are all kinds of uses for the second moment of inertia, or I should say, there's all kinds of uses for the second moment of area, but when you see the comparison, you'll know that why they're so similar. First of all, let's ca calculate the moment of inertia of this particular object. And let's say that there's a certain amount of thickness to it, and so that this actually has mass. And of course, we can say that the mass can be calculated typically, or maybe yet, better yet, we can say that the density is equal to the ratio of the mass divided by the volume. However, in this case, instead of dividing it by the volume, we're going to divide it by the area. We're going to call it the mass per unit area instead of the mass per unit volume because it's, very, very, it's a very thin plate. So we can say that the density and the mass is proportionate to the area. So instead of using mass over volume, we can define it as mass divided by area. And so that small little dm, that small little mass element, is going to be equal to the area density times dA, and in this case dA is going to be the width, which is W, times the height, which is dy. And so now we're going to calculate the moment of inertia, which is equal to the integral of y squared dm, which means that this is equal to the integral, of course we're going to integrate from 0 to L, from 0 to L of y squared, instead of dm, we're going to write density times width times dy. Of course, we can see that since density and the width are constants, we can pull them outside the integral sign. So this is density times width times the integral from 0 to L of y squared dy. And now when we integrate, we get that is equal to w, uh, that's uh, density times w times y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to L. So now when we plug in the upper limit, we get L cubed plug in the lower limit, you get zero. So this becomes equal to one-third the density times the width times L cubed. Now we're going to simplify that a little bit because again, we can say that the mass in this case is going to equal to density times the area and in this case that's equal to the density times the length times the width. So we can pull out an L and a W here and say that this is equal, and of course when we say this, we mean the moment of inertia is equal to one-third density times W times L times L squared. Now we realize that the density times the width times the length is actually equal to the mass of this object. So this is equal to one-third the mass times L squared, which by now, if we've done moment of inertia before, we should recognize that as being the legitimate equation for the moment of inertia of an object that has a certain amount of length L and that has a certain mass M. So this is legitimately the moment of inertia of this particular object. It's basically the moment of inertia of an object that rotates about the x-axis that has length L and rotates about one end. If it rotates from the middle, it would be 1 12th ml squared, but rotating from one end, it is actually 1 3rd ml squared. So now let's calculate the second moment of area of a similar object. It has the same length, the same width, but now let's say it does not have any depth. We're simply going to ignore the fact that the object has mass and any sort of depth to it, and we're only going to, we're only going to consider the area of the object. So we're going to find the second moment of area relative to the x-axis. The second moment of area is kind of the way the area is distributed relative to a particular axis, in this case the x-axis. So it's going to be a double integral. We're first going to integrate across from one side to the other side in this direction. And then we're going to integrate from top to bottom. So since this is the width, we go from 0 to w, because it doesn't really matter where we place the object. So this is equal to the integral of dx times the integral of y squared dy. On dx, we're going to integrate from 0 to w, and in the y direction from 0 to l. So this is equal to x evaluated from 0 to w multiplied times 
y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to L. Let's see what we get now. So the second moment of area with respect to the x-axis, this should be an x, is equal to, so here when we put in the lower limit we get 0, the upper limit we get w, so that's w times, plug in the upper limit, we get 1 third L cubed, and we get 0 down here, so we have 1 third L cubed, which is equal to 1 third w times L. Oop, times L cubed, can't forget the cube. Now, again, what we're going to recognize is that the area of this object is equal to length times width. So if I pull out a length times width, I can say that the second moment of area can be written as one-third times length times width, and then we have left over an L squared. So this then can be written as one-third the area times L squared. So this gives us the second moment of area for an object that we have ignored the mass and the thickness of, and then compared that result to the result here where we included the thickness and the mass of the object. And in the end, we actually got the very same equation. Here, the moment of inertia is equal to one-third the mass times L squared. Here, the moment of inertia, or the second moment of area, is equal to one-third A L squared. All we've done is instead of considering the mass of the object, we simply considered the air of the object because we're dealing with typically just a thin plate where the thickness is very thin, the density is uniformly distributed, so it doesn't matter if we consider the mass of the object or the area of the object, we'll get the exact same result. And that is often used if we don't know the thickness, we don't know the mass, we don't care, we can still find the moment of inertia by calculating the second moment of area, and we'll get the exact same result. And hopefully that will give you even a better idea what we mean by the second moment of area. And that's how it's done. Well, you sound so excited about this one. Uh, 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 uh. Oh! <laughs> Is that on film? <laughs> well, it's neat. It's good stuff.